What happened this week in the world of crypto? Well, here to talk with me about that is Peter Gantner, Deborah Caswell, and Dawn Clifton from True Badger. Everyone, welcome. Hey, Bob, how are you? I'm great. I hope you, the same is true for you. Very good. Great. Yeah, doing well. Awesome. So one of the things I wanted to tackle this week in our episode is this notion of uh, diversity and uh, inclusion with respect to crypto and its customer base, and also in terms of the workforce. And uh, Peter, I, I, let's, let's, uh, let's start with you, if you don't mind, just sort of give us a lay of the land with respect to both uh, the customer base and the workforce base. Well, as soon as we started to dive into crypto, um, we've been a team that have been working together for a while. We have a very diverse team um, in when we're working together. But when we got into the crypto space and we started working with other projects, we started noticing that they were male dominated. Um, and then we did some research and found that Bitcoin, uh, when the research was done, 85% of all Bitcoin wallets were held by males, only 15% by females. And we noticed it as we're growing through the process of building True Badger and stuff like that, that it is definitely right now a male dominated space. It could be um, that it's newer. It could be the risk factors, right? So it's it's not quite in, hit the mainstream yet. Um, but it's one of the issues that is one of our uh, driving features right now is to get a lot more women engaged in crypto. I mean, ultimately for crypto to go completely mainstream, it needs to be able to be used for commerce. Um, and 60 plus percent of every dollar that's spent, not just here in the U.S., but around the world and actually more in other countries are spent by women. So in order for something to be used as a commerce, as a means of buying a thing of milk or whatever it may be, we really need to expand and grow on that. So for the future of the cryptoverse, as I call it, to continue to expand and grow, we definitely have to work on getting more women as customers, but also um, that balance perspective is the best, I think, way to run companies. And so getting more women into the workforce in that side of crypto, I think, is extremely important. Maybe we can hear from one of the ladies on their perspective. Yeah, well, I was thinking that, you know, crypto really started, I, I think there just isn't a lot of adoption in, in, in the crypto space yet. And the early adoption came from those people who were in the in the interwebs and those weird um, message boards, right? I don't think you find a lot of women in those weird message boards yet, even still. And that's where it began. And I think um, because of that, it just hasn't it just hasn't been adopted by uh, by a lot of people out there. But Don and I are here to change that because our main focus really is on helping um, helping people who've never thought about crypto, really understand what crypto is, and then help hold their hand and walk them through the process. And a lot of women, um, you know, really are, I think, are looking for somebody just to help guide them. And, um, and that's what we do on a daily basis. Yeah, I would agree with all that. Those are really valid points. And um, just to speak to a couple of those points, I think that education is very, very important. I think a lot of women are intimidated by this space because they don't understand it. You know, it is a new financial thing, right? And, and most of us as women, me included, I didn't really know how to navigate or get involved or get into this without being scammed or, you know, there's just so many factors, right? And we want to definitely provide that education so that we can make them feel safe and help them understand it is a safe space if you are in a community that helps guide you and helps warn you. And, you know, we're doing all of those things in our community. Um, I also think um, when we were talking about there's not enough women in the space and even in the workforce, I think that's very true. And I would love to see more women developers in this space. I think they have great insight. I think they have a, a much different view of how to solve problems. We're natural problem solvers, right? Um, so I think it would be amazing if we could have something to tap into that um, and bring those closer, you know, to this world, that would be amazing. Mm -hmm. Let me go back to the education question for a second, because when I think about educating even myself about crypto, uh, if you were to do a Google search, uh, it, there's almost no way of telling the good from the bad 
uh, in terms of education? What, what advice do you have for people uh, in terms of you know, vetting educational material? Well, I think they should start really with um, some of the bigger, the bigger uh, platforms that have been around for a while. So Coinbase is an excellent place to go. And um, they provide free crypto just to learn about crypto. So I would always suggest they go to Coinbase first and do some research there. But always look to see um, that the platform has a, a, a solid amount of followers and great reviews before you get involved in anything. Anything brand new, you're going to want to triple and quadruple check that you're in the right place for sure. Absolutely. I would agree with that. And then also, um, you know, make sure you do your due diligence as far as the projects themselves or, you know, the companies you're trying to learn from or the coins you're trying to learn about or whatever that may be. You know, anybody can throw a website up there, right? Anybody can have a Twitter account. Anybody can have a Telegram. But you need to make sure that it's, you know, active, up to date. There's admins present. There's people you can actually talk to. There's so many times in Telegram for us even that we go and try to research or ask questions. And it's just bots responding, right? There's no real people. So definitely make sure they're real people and you can actually ask questions and get valid answers and things like that. There's just so much to look for. It, it's such a wide area of concern, right, for most people. So we want to break those barriers and help them understand how to be safe. Hmm. Well, you have any thoughts it, about the education? Yeah, another uh, point is uh, fully dox teams, people that are saying, hi, I'm John, Bob, Nancy, Susan, and I'm running this project. And here's who I am. Here's my LinkedIn profile. And of course, you can look and make sure those real. I mean, imagine if you had a publicly traded company and they said, OK, we have this company we want you to invest in, but we won't tell you who's running it. We won't tell you who's the CFO. We're not going to tell you anybody that's involved in this thing other than, look, we're in this space and we're going to do this. So that is one of the first early indicators. And of course, there's always exceptions to that. I mean, if if we would have known who Satoshi was, would Bitcoin had survived this long? But those are more the, uh, you know, uh, the, uh, just a small amount of projects that are in that category. For the most part, I want to know who's running it. I want to know who's behind it. I want to know what their experience is. Um, this is a great space, but there's a lot of the projects that have a lot of 20, 21, 22, 23-year-old teams. I mean, that's the extent of the teams. And it's not that they can't build something, but I would say that they might want to go get some people with experience that do know how to run, because ultimately these are businesses, right? We talked to them as projects, cryptocurrencies, but ultimately they're a business that has, you know, expenses and budgets and, you know, all the different aspects of running a team, organizing things, all of those are important in making the project successful. So that would be one of my key things. The other one, and sorry for the self plug, plug into True Badger. We have live Zooms, we have information, we have the stuff. And, I, and it, to me, it's not even come by True Badger. Plug into what we're doing. One of our guiding missions are, is to provide customer service and to walk people through that. So we actually have a calendar on our Telegram page where you can go click on it, set up a Zoom meeting with a live person that will walk you through setting up a wallet, answer questions, do that type of stuff. So it's something that we're doing that's unique in the space to help get people involved in the prod in into the crypto space. Yeah. So Peter, you talked about crypto becoming more mainstream. I noticed, for instance, uh, you can now buy uh, Bitcoin and a couple other uh, tokens on PayPal, and they too are offering educational um, uh, opportunities. Uh, my sense is that this may be it may be a slow process where, as it becomes more mainstream in places like PayPal which probably has a, a fairly large footprint among, uh, among women, uh, that, that too sort of maybe gives credibility to the possible, you know, to using it with the tokens. Yeah, I think the best thing that PayPal will bring to the table is they're talking about making it to where their merchants can easily accept it. So I will be able to go take my PayPal card down, load up some crypto on it or have cash on it and convert it to crypto and go simply go purchase the milk or the gas or those type of things, right? And buy it utilizing crypto. So they're the bridge to a lot of the vendors to be able to accept that. I think right now it's Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, 
uh, Ethereum and Litecoin are the four that they're dealing with in the space. It's taking a little bit longer, right? So they announced it uh, the end of last year, but it's a process and it's moving forward. I think that just shows though the potential and that this is not a fad or you know something that's going to disappear when you have all the biggest firms in the world, including PayPal. I think last time I looked, PayPal is like 360 million, I think it is. It's at least 180 to like 360 million customers that use PayPal cards. So imagine taking a space and then all of a sudden opening it up to that sort of people. And you're right. There's probably as many women that have PayPal cards as men. My wife has one. I have one, right? We both use them. So that is one of those that can help balance out the uh, inequality in the space or, you know, the, that, that imbalance. Yeah. Any other players in that space like PayPal that are sort of maybe cash app, cash Cash app app. is in that space. Yeah. Yeah. I've I've used them several times. They're super simple as well. Yeah. And then there's crypto.com. I have a crypto uh, visa card that I use. And what I do is I, they have about six cryptos I can load onto it. Um, and so I have Ethereum on there and, uh, essentially when I go into the store, I actually use my card right now to pay for gas or to pay for those type of things already through crypto.com. So that's another great resource to be able to use. That's a pure play where you have PayPal and, and cash app, their financial ones that are moving into the crypto space. Yeah. So in terms of setting expectations, what's the runway for adoption among women? Um, I'd love it to be next week, right? right? <laughs> <laughs> Ladies, do you guys have any thoughts on that? Well, I mean, as far as, you know, bringing women into the fold using those tools, right? We're some of the best shoppers in the world. So that's naturally going to, you know, come um, with everything we, that we do daily and love to do. So I see that being a huge positive going forward. Mm. Yeah, I would agree with that. Yeah, I would definitely say my wife is a much better shopper than me. As a matter of fact, we were on a trip and she took me in the store with her the first time. She did not take me in the store with her the second and the third time she went in the store. She left me outside. So no, yeah, I, I know that trick. You are a lousy shopper. <laughs> I know that trick. <laughs> so uh, let's talk a little bit about um, the workforce and, and what can be done to uh, uh, increase the diversity of, of the workforce. You. Um, who wants to go first? Well, I, I would say just once they understand the opportunity that's there for crypto, right? Women are no different, right? They want opportunity. They want to be in a place where it's going somewhere. So once they realize that this is here to stay and that it's not going to go away, I think naturally they'll start getting into the space because of the potential to move up and accelerate Uh, My daughter's an engineer and she's very focused on her career and accelerating and moving forward. So she was a programmer. I guarantee you she'd be right here in the crypto space because that's where the opportunity is. Right. Five, 10, 15 years, uh, the ability to accelerate into this space is going to be tremendous. And the demand for people that understand the space is going to be great. We all know paychecks are tied to demand, right? If there's a high demand and a low supply, paychecks get up higher. And I think that would naturally bring women into the space. And of course, highlighting people like Deb and Dawn, who are very deep into the space. Yeah, and I would say that um, because this space is so new, just like you were saying, Peter, it is a phenomenal place for a woman to get into and, and start start her career inside of the crypto space. I've come from the startup world my whole my whole adult life. I've always worked for startups. I love the startup world because there's so much flexibility and you kind of write your own ticket. You just learn some skills and write your own ticket. So this is a phenomenal place for, for um, women to jump into. And, and, uh, and I think we're going to see a lot more women uh, come into this space for sure. Yeah, I would agree with that. I think um, there's so much opportunity here, not just for the development side, right. But there's, I mean, there's a social media aspect, you know, we need social media, Um, mediators and content writers and graphics people and like there's everything needed in this space um, in a job function right to make this thing work and I think the more projects that are out there much like ours that focus on community I think women gravitate to community right we we want to be part of a community and when we have a job that is so focused on a community 
and they're able to just use that outlet and nurture that and, and have all those skills be used. I think that's just a perfect fit. And I think they'll come more and more. And I think when you can find a place that pays in crypto, I think you're in the right place, ladies. (laughs) (laughs) That's fair. So let me, I mean, the analogy that I'll use is I'm quite familiar with what happens in the world of financial services and certainly in the world of certified financial planners at the moment, about 20% of certified financial planners are women, though the number employed by the financial services industry is probably 50%. Not all of them are client facing. Many of them might be in a customer service role or a Mm -hmm. tech role or operations role or of, of some sort. But the industry, the financial service industry, is is focused on recruiting more women. Do you, do you see that happening in the world of crypto, or or has it yet to happen? Well, if we recruit any more, we're going to be. I'm going to be over. I mean, I'll be just. We'll be really outnumbered, right? And then that'll just be. But yeah, definitely, I think that that's the focus. Matter of fact, we have another. I'll call it a sibling company that we're dealing with, and they are actively out. They're all guys that are on the team right now. And they've actually had these discussions. That's where they were jealous of our team, right? They're like, how did you get, how did you find all these women? Uh, The project is called Sonar. Um, They're actively looking for some women to get involved with them on their team. So it's one of their focuses. So we do know there are other companies that are beginning to move in that direction. Yeah. Deborah, gone? Yeah, no, I completely agree. I I think it's a... I think it's really important to have that balance on teams, right? If you're looking for people, so what are we doing with True Badger, right? We're trying to grow the token, grow the token community. So you're gonna, if you want to bring more women in to, to your token, you should have some women front, front and center and have those women feel comfortable, right? That they're coming to a place where they're going to be shown how to do it and nurtured and, and um, you know, helped along in the process. I think it's, I think it's brilliant. Mm. So the the other challenge, in addition to recruiting women, would be recruiting um, people of color, Blacks, um, Hispanics, et cetera. Any thoughts about what can be done there to um, increase the diversity of the workforce there? Absolutely. You know, I've I've worked with with um, plenty of people in my in my past life with some other projects that I was on. And man, I mean, I would love to see a lot more diversity in this in this space that I'm glad you brought that up, Robert, because I actually haven't seen a lot of that at this point with, um, with the crypto that I follow with the, with the people that I follow in on YouTube, you know, trying teaching me more about, I'm I'm not seeing that. So I, I mean, let's make a call to action to, to, to make that happen. This is a brilliant space for everybody. Everybody's welcome. So we've covered um, expanding the customer base, expanding the workforce, anything that we haven't touched upon with those two topics that we ought to mention before we move on to another topic? Uh, No, I have been on the community side of it, right? So, um, you know, with us, I would think that with True Badger, probably we are pretty balanced between men and women. And the reason why is we do have a balanced team. I mean, if I was somebody and I went to a Oh, and I've done it before. You know, you, the the red hat ladies that show up at the hotels, right? You go there and you, even if you're a guy and you're walking through and you walk into the room and it's like you feel out of place completely, right? Because it's all women and one per, one guy that's in the room. So in any situation, so I, I think, again, just by that outreach side of things, um, you know, in the chats, different things. So if the women that are watching this, you want to get involved, it is actually simple to get involved in crypto. Find a project you love, go on, become active in their Telegram or in one of their chats, Discord. And what's happening is the projects are looking for token holders, people that are involved that love their project. And that's actually how they're moving people up through the ranks. That's how they're getting people involved in their company. So first, you're a token enthusiast. You engage on the social media. They make you a moderator of the social media. Now, all of a sudden, other women, when they come in, are going to see, you know, a woman moderator in there. It's going to help bring more people in. And that's actually how we're looking for our next set of people. Of course, you have to have the skills right? If programming or whatever the skill that we're looking for, but that is a very simple way. I don't think there's an industry that's as easy to get into on a professional level than cryptocurrency, because again, you're looking for those people that stand out 
that say it. And that's for, you know, um, anybody, right? It's, it's women, minorities, anybody across the board. That's the, the easiest and the simplest way to do that. And Deb pointed out on YouTube, diversity, become a YouTuber. We need more female, um, um, uh, mo- you know, YouTubers, <laughs> um, more uh, minority YouTubers would be great to engage. It's an easy way to jump into the space and become a part of this whole, I mean, this thing is where it's going over the next five or 10 years because of the value that the blockchain delivers to society. That's what this is all about. Cryptocurrency is the one that's facing forward the most, but ultimately, and I said this, I think on the last show is cryptocurrency is the result of the block, the value that the blockchain is building. And so it's just, it's got a bright future and we need a lot more people to join us. Definitely. And just to pull on that thread just a little bit before the blockchain comment, um, I just wanted to mention that when I came to crypto, um, I was very, uh, I was very intimidated by it until I found on YouTube another woman who I could connect with, who I could watch. And I watched every single one of her YouTube videos to just catch up and understand what I was getting into. And I felt so much more comfortable. So it is so important that we not only put more women out there as influencers on on YouTube and other spaces, TikTok, other spaces, but also definitely minority um, influencers as well. Let's bring everybody to the table. Like Peter was saying with blockchain, there are more opportunities right now for people to get involved, whether that's technically or on, you know, an admin side customer serve. There's so every role that's out there can be filled in the world of building these companies on the blockchain out um, for the world. So now is a, it's a brilliant time to jump in to crypto. Add too that um, in addition to all that, those are great, great comments. I totally agree with those, but I would also say that don't feel so intimidated by this space, you don't have to know everything to get involved. We didn't know everything. Certainly we have learned along the way. And, you know, there's a lot of education that we're providing, but we're also learning every single day. We certainly don't know everything and we probably won't ever know everything, right? You can learn everything as we go. And it's just so important that they, they're not that intimidated by that piece of it, right? Just go ahead and jump in and learn a little bit here and there, ask questions. You know, that's how we started. And well, that's what I love about True Badger, right? We meet you where you are, right? right? So if you don't know anything about crypto, we'll meet you right there. We'll help you through the process. If you've already traded on a platform, we'll help you trade for True Badger or whatever token you want. Hmm. We're here to help educate everybody on crypto, right? We're not, we're not only dealing with True Badger here. We'd love it if you'd buy some True Badger and hold on to that. And, and our community is brilliant about helping you understand why it's a good one to hold on to if you're going to jump into True Badger, right? So we have a lot of traders that came into uh, that are token holders. And uh, it's just really fun to see how our community is lifting our token and helping our token stay at these at these nice uh, places that we're seeing it. We've we've got a great community, a great community. Everybody's welcome again. I'll well, say that. And I said to these to these ladies, I said, "Hey, we need you to do an AMA." I, they show up, and now they're the DeFi divas, right? I mean, they just took it to a whole nother <laughs> level. And I'm sure they're looking for other DeFi divas to bring into the mix. They've done a couple of YouTube videos already of them talking about crypto um, and the whole industry as a whole. So um, check them out on YouTube. Um, they're on there on the True Badger channel. Um, and again, reach out to these ladies and they'll help walk you through the process and, and help you get involved. We are definitely have an active um, outreach to move things forward in that space. Great. You know. So um, there are two current events that I want to touch on. Uh, one has to do with Senator Elizabeth Warren uh, and her um, efforts to have the SEC uh, regulate crypto. Um, any thoughts about uh, her recent um, request? Well, the first thing I'll say to that is I, I wish there was a way that we could stop every scammer out there from being a scammer and, tr- and instead, instead teach them how to hold a co- <laughs> a token or a coin and do well in that way, because it's because of that, all of that that's happening that makes 
everybody feel like it needs to be regulated, right? It's, it's, it's a bummer to me that we're going to have a, a lot of regulation on it because I think it's a beautiful way for those people who've never been able to invest or, uh, you know, that just haven't had the means. I mean, you don't have to have a lot of anything to get involved in the crypto space. And my fear is that it's going to take away that ability for just anyone to get involved if we put too much regulation on it. Hmm. Yeah, I agree. I, I, w- I would like to see the, the crypto, a, a lot of them come together in some type of an association and start to do some self-regulation, start cleaning it up um, ourselves. Some of the blockchains putting some barriers in place for people to be able to start projects. That's the way we can stop it. So, of course, everybody wants to take the easy path and just do what's, you know, it the fast way. But then that opens the door for these scam artists and for these things to happen and for the problems to happen. Then you have people start calling for regulation. So hopefully before because that's a process to go through, right, for that type of stuff to do it. Um, hopefully that the industry will come together in a better way and start doing some self-regulation, then they have to put less on it. There definitely needs to be something in place, but a minimal amount, that's a structure, and then have the industry do it themselves. The other thing is here is probably more than anything else is this is a global thing right now, right? Cryptocurrency is not a U.S. thing. And so if you have the U.S. making their rules and Canada making their rules and Mexico making their rules, um, it, it could get very complex and like one day I'm here and I'm, I'm in a legal standpoint with this country and then I'm in a, I'm not in this other country and not me even having to go there, just doing transactions over the internet in these different countries. So it's going to be a much more difficult task than just saying, Hey, let's regulate the U S dollar and the U S financial marketplace in the United States because it is such a global movement out there. Um, It's going to be, I wouldn't want to be the people trying to figure out how to do this unless they're going to do it in a way that's just going to try to squish the whole thing. But I don't think it's possible. I mean, China's tried to do it five, six times now, right? And every time they do it, they push on it and it comes up stronger. It's kind of like, uh, what do you call it? Whack-a-mole, right? Where you hit it down here and it pops up over here. And each time it's stronger when it does that. Hmm. Uh, so the other bit of news that caught my attention was the um, uh, the notion that a special purpose acquisition company is getting into the space. Uh, talk a little bit about what uh, what's happening there. Yeah, so that's bullish. Um, they're going to be rolling, rolling it into a publicly traded company, right? Mm-hmm. So, um, and I think it's just they've seen what Coinbase has been able to do. I think it's good for us. Um, Cryptocurrency is a network and the network is as strong as its participants. And so when you start getting people that have legal departments and, uh, you know, um, uh, lobbyists and that have wealth that are well funded behind them, once they jump into it, of course, too, bringing more investors involved. I may not buy crypto, but I may buy a crypto stock. Then being now tied to crypto, I might be willing to now learn more about it and get more involved. Well, anytime you see somebody that was part of the New York Stock Exchange, come on, Tom Farley, and say that he's now going to be the CEO of this new company. I think think it does everything for us as far as credibility is concerned, right? So I love it when we see um, anything come out from somebody from, from the New York, you know, any stock exchanges or anything that is considered the norm, right? They're helping to normalize um, cryptocurrency when we see these kinds of stories and these events taking place. Yeah. So those were two stories that caught my attention. Did anything happen in the world of crypto this week that uh, took, captured your attention? You know, I think it's just the, the sideways movement of the whole market right now. I mean, if you're even considering to get involved at all, I think it's a great time to, of course, this is not financial advice, but just it, the market's been moving sideways for a while. It was in this great uptrend. It came down some. It's been moving sideways now. So for people that do want to get and you know, are thinking about it, this would be a time to get educated, start figuring it out and move into the space because- you know, you never know when that next huge boom is going to take place. 
Yeah, actually, to that point, Peter, let me ask you, I mean, some some people might have an aversion to actually buying the token, but they can get involved in some publicly traded securities like um, uh, like the gray, uh, gray scale. Gray scale. Gray right. scale. Yeah, there's a lot. There's 401ks out there now that you can get involved with, um, you know, that you can put your, you know, your retirement savings in and let that grow, maybe a percentage of it to yep. try to pick up on the fast growth these next five to 10 years. So yeah, you don't have to buy individual coins. Grayscale, I think, has 20, 30 plus funds, right? They have a Bitcoin fund, they have a Ethereum fund, and they're actually doing it for certain tokens. They do it for groups of tokens. So that's definitely a great resource to get involved with. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, there's Coinbase, they'll be bullish. These are companies that service, I guess they're the picks and the shovels of the cryptocurrency industry, right? They're the gateway into it. Um, and so those are always good, uh, you know, good plays right there as far as the people that the, the rest of the industry rely on. Hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, any closing thoughts, Deb, Don? No, I, I just really appreciate that you would have us on today. Um, I, I'm, I, I'm really excited to see more women in the industry. And I uh, look forward to helping everybody who's watching. Come on in. We're, we're ready for you. Absolutely. I'm so grateful that you had us. Thank you so much. And uh, yeah, we're very passionate about um, bringing more win women into the fold, not only in our team, but also in our community. And uh, very, very excited to see that happen in the near future.